Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I'm going to talk about the interface segregation principle and how that kind of applies in Unity. So you can see here the definition is essentially that no client should be forced to depend on methods it does not use. But what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at some code. So I've got an interface set up here, an iEntity interface. And this has a decent amount of things on there. It's not enormous the, the real one is much much bigger or was much much bigger um, but it's still at the point where it's doing quite a few things right it's taking care of uh, buffs it's telling our thing that hey this thing whatever implements this interface also has to deal with buffs it's got a buff controller on it uh, it can be mesmerized it has strength stamina some other stats apparently it has an attack speed a health a max health and a way to modify health, this is an actual method. These other ones are properties, but they still kind of apply just like the um, the statement about methods. They also shouldn't rely on or be forced to have properties that they don't actually use or implement. And then this one also requires it to have a damage shield. So this might work great as an entity, like at a real base entity level where I had like a character. So maybe this would be more like an I character where it's like an NPC or a player. And then these are like stats that they would have and things that they could do. But what if I wanted to have health on a door and I want all of my code to go through the same flow? I don't want to have to implement this I entity interface on the door, right? So say I've got my ability system is set up so that I you know, do an attack and I take in an I entity that's the target and that thing you know loses life and does whatever um, if if I require it this I entity with this big big interface here um, what will happen is I'll then need to implement all of this on a door so let's just code some of that out real quick so say I had like a public uh, class NPC and it implemented I entity right now, when I want to do this, I'm going to have to implement every single one of these properties here. Totally makes sense, right? Now, if I wanted to do a door, though, so I did like public class door, and I want I entity, because I want this thing to be targetable and take damage too, it no longer really makes sense, right? Like, door shouldn't have strength, a door shouldn't have intelligence, at least not any door that I've seen. So, how do we make this a little bit? Cleaner. Well, first, let me just show a real quick example of how you would call something like this. So let's say we have another class, like in, let's do like a public class uh, attack processor. So we do something like this, where we have a class that's responsible for processing attacks, and then we did something like maybe public void process attack, and then for this method, we could take in an i entity and call it target. All right, so here we'd have a method that does something with the target. Maybe it does a target dot modify health, right? That's one of the methods we have here. And it just modifies it by negative one. So it does one damage, whatever. We'd have some real code in here that's figuring out the actual amounts. But now say I want um, to be able to attack a door, right? I, to do that, I'd need to make it implement this I entity like I have down here, which means it's going to have to have, again, all of these properties on it. So every single one of these properties would have to be implemented on the door. Really, all I care about is modify health and maybe some of the health related things. So how would we kind of clean this up and separate out this interface into multiple to make it, I guess, just better, right? And more versatile. So we, we're not implementing a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense on an object and making this object bigger than it needs to be. But to do that, I'm going to scroll down. What we do instead is split these things out into smaller interfaces. In fact, I can get rid of these base interfaces here. Don't need that for this example. Um, we can see here we've got a simple interface for I have buffs. Very, very basic. Has a buff controller. If it can be mesmerized, it'll have this I can be mesmerized interface. And we just add these interfaces onto the class. Uh, there's also an I have stats, which inherits from I have health. Because in this case, I'm assuming that anything that has stats, health is one of those stats, so it's going to exist there. We could split these totally out, but we don't need to, I don't think, in this case. 
But I have health, again, doesn't rely on I have stats. So we can have a door that has health that takes a modify health and doesn't have stats and everything will work. And then the same with the damage shield. So if we're gonna change this code up, we could just go up to here and change this door to require an I have health interface and implement that, which in that case, we would just end up with methods like this. So we'd have these right here and modify health might do something like uh, health minus equals amount on here. And we do like some, do some door death. So if the door dies, whatever, we do something there. Um, it'd be as simple as that. Instead of having all of these other things on here that won't work, don't make any sense and don't do anything. Like we'd have to have a strength on there. Again, if we'd use the entity, we'd have to have strength. We'd have to have a mesmerize method on there that is what's again to mesmerize. It's a door. So it'd end up doing nothing. We'd just end up with a bunch of ugly wasted code that's not really implemented and just confuses things. So here, just by separating these out, it all just kind of works. Now, we do have a problem though, because now our process attack, which was requiring this I entity, it's no longer gonna be valid, right? We can't just um, process it as an entity. We, we have to have a, I guess, a, a lower level interface. And then we also need to modify the way that this, uh, this process is, because this process, really a process attack should just take in an I have health. Actually, yeah, let's keep it simple. So in this case, process attack really just needs an I have health. It doesn't need this entity. It doesn't need all of these other things. Now we may have another um, another method in here that's like public void calculate attack amount, and that could take in an I have stats, uh, and we'll call this like attacker. So this would be the, or, and it wouldn't return void, it would return like an int. And let's just set that damage to be equal to maybe the attacker strength. So we just do return attacker.strength. Yeah, hey, let's multiply it by two. So our attack amount right now is just the attacker's strength times, oh, that's not strength, that's stamina, strength times two. And then let's say we have, um, oh, let's see, let's, let's do one more thing in here. So let's go public void process melee. And in here we'll have an attacker. And then we'll have a target. So we'll have I have health target, just like that. So then we do you know int amount equals calculate attack amount, pass in the attacker. Then we do process attack on the target for the amount. There we go, we'll pass in amount as an int right here. And here we're working against two different interfaces, but these objects can be the same. So now we've got a process melee method that calculates an amount based off I have stats and then does some damage to an I have health. Now, if I had a NPC class like this, that's an I entity, I can now swap this out and have it be an I have stats and we're actually done. Now, now we, because I have stats implements or inherits from I have health, we can actually call in to process melee and pass in an attacker that's an NPC and a target that's an NPC. But we could also pass in an attacker that's an NPC and a target that's a door. So now that our interface is split out enough, our door doesn't need to be an entity. It doesn't need to have stats. It doesn't need to have anything else. And this code will still all work. So I, I hope this makes sense. Again, in a Unity project, you may not run into too many that have a lot of interfaces and you may end up seeing a lot more of this separation just in the components so you'll have a stats component a health component um you know, maybe a damage shield component or whatever these other components are and, and that that's totally fine as long as the things are separated the key thing here is really getting these down to small reusable components or interfaces that are easy to code against and don't require you to do anything extra. They don't require you to implement anything that you're not going to use. So again, may not apply to all projects. If you're not using interfaces though, you should look into it. Um, I've done a couple videos on how to use interfaces in Unity projects. It really does help keep your project kind of lightweight and clean. It, it's not always the case. There are some projects where it just doesn't make sense. 
But if you have a you know a situation like this where you have multiple things that you interact with in similar but slightly different ways, they can make a huge difference in your code base. All right, well, um, thanks for watching. If you have questions, please drop them below. I'm not sure how well this all comes across. I'm hoping it's it's good though. Um, and then if you have comments, again, drop them below. Uh, don't forget like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and keep their code clean. And thanks for watching.